This week's message, given by Pastor Stephen Yun at the Sucker Sunny United Methodist Church, April 21st, 2024. The message is Suitcase Transforming Our Baggage 3, based on 2 Corinthians 3 1 to 6 and 4 7 to 9. Our scripture readings from this for this morning, uh, the first is from 2 Corinthians chapter 3, verses 1 through 6, and then we have uh, 2 Corinthians chapter 4, verses 7 through 9. Are we beginning to commend ourselves again, or do we need, like some people, letters of recommendation to you or from you? You yourselves are our letter written on our hearts, known and read by everyone. You show that you are a letter from Christ, the result of our ministry, written not with ink, but with the spirit of the living God, not on tablets of stone, but on tablets of human hearts. Such confidence we have through Christ before God, not that we are competent in ourselves to claim anything for ourselves, but our competence comes from God. He has made us competent as ministers of a new covenant, not of the letter, but of the spirit. For the letter kills, but the spirit gives life. But we have this treasure in jars of clay to show that this all-surpassing power is from God and not from us. We are hard-pressed on every side, but not crushed, perplexed, but not in despair, persecuted, but not abandoned, struck down, but not destroyed. This is the word of God for the people of God. Thanks, Thanks be, be to God. God. Amen. Amen. It's good to be with you all. Let us pray. Loving, gracious God, we give you thanks and praise for your presence with us. Lord, we know this is not just a meeting. This is not just a social gathering. This is a time for us to make a pause and see where you are in our lives and what you are doing and magnify your vision your desire for us and for our world. As we worship and listen to the words of Scripture, oh God, remind us that you, your word is a lamp unto our feet and light into our path. Come Holy Spirit, open our hearts and minds to the movement of the Holy Spirit. And may the words of my mouth and meditations of my heart be acceptable to you, our rock and our redeemer. Amen. Amen. Friends, have you ever had the thought, I'm not blank enough? What would you feel in the blank? If we are honest, we all have things in our lives that seem out of reach because we feel we're not enough, because we perceive ourselves inadequate. If you have ever felt that you are not good enough for what you do and for who you are, you would know how heavy this baggage can be to carry. In this sermon series, we are exploring different baggage we carry in our journey. Based on your survey responses, 40 of you responded to this survey, and we are exploring how we can surrender, unpack, discern, and transform the baggage that we carry, and how we live free from our burdens while remaining accountable and committed as Christians. I'm not enough for everyone. 
This emotional burden may be one of the oldest emotional baggage you carry, especially for some of you. This baggage has become part of yourself since you're a little child. And as we navigate relationships with our parents and teachers and those significant others around us, this baggage can become larger and heavier. What makes this baggage distinct from the other baggage is, though, that the pain and the stress that we experience is self-inflicted. Under this baggage, under its weight, we beat ourselves up, reciting the message over and over again, I am not good enough. I'm not enough for everyone. I'm not sure how you feel in the blank, but for me, it, is, it was, I'm not smart enough. During my school years, I was passionate about studying. I was one of those students who were very diligent and dedicated to their academic work. In South Korea during the 1990s, high school juniors and seniors experienced a rigorous period known as admission hell. It's like a hell, where studying consumed nearly all waking hours. Aside from eating and sleeping, you devote, you devote an average 15 hours each day to studying. The grading system employed the relative evaluation, meaning after taking midterm or a final exams, students were ranked from one to whatever number of students in the school, based on their scores. It was brutal. In my class, there was one student who constantly held the top rank. Consequently, regardless of how much effort I put in, I always found myself trailing just behind him. Well, after I entered college and graduate school, things got worse. Because you know, there are so many smarter people, smarter students, out there, which reinforced my belief I'm not smart enough, which even make, make me feel that I'm not just smart, but dumb. I had carried this baggage for many years until I came to realization that I was, wor I was my worst enemy and my hardest critic, constantly comparing myself to others. Friends, I don't know what your blank is, but some of you it is, I'm not strong enough, I'm not caring enough, I'm not pretty enough, I'm not rich enough, I'm not faithful enough, I'm not spiritual enough. The list goes on and on. Whatever you feel in the blank, the root source of each one of those blanks is rooted in I'm not good enough. Depending on the circumstance, we might experience a sense of inadequacy. And that's what it means to be a human being. You know, we all have uh, weaknesses and strength as a human person. We are all work in progress before God, lacking something within us. So we must have a sound vision of who we are and we must know ourselves. But in our Christian journey, knowing ourselves means to know the self that is known by Jesus Christ. We should note that the Bible doesn't simply say, be yourself. I'm sure you hear these phrases from the psychologists and motivational speakers in our world, be yourself. The Paul's letter to the Christians in Corinth reminds us of what it means to know ourselves and what it means to know who we are in our relationship with Christ. He writes, if anyone is in Christ, the new creation has come. The old has gone, the new is here. In this passage, he talks about how Christ changed our sense of who we are. 
and how Christ changed the way of knowing ourselves and the world around us. When we talk about being ourselves as Christians, it means to be ourselves as known by Christ. It means to be the new us that is growing within us in Christ. This morning we read another uh, passage from the Second Corinthians where he talks about the identity of Christians in an, a very interesting way. He writes, you yourselves are our letter. You yourselves are our letter, written on our hearts, known and read by everyone. You show that you are letter from Christ. The result of our ministry, written not with ink, but with the Spirit of the living God, not on the tablets of stone, but on the tablets of human hearts. What this means is that the Christ is being written into every part of our inner being to make us His living letters, so that others may read and know Christ in us and through us. The tablets on which Christ is written is not something of stone or of, of, of paper, but it's tablets of flesh in our hearts. And Christ is being inscribed with the Spirit of the living God as the ink. This means that the Christ should be written daily into every part of our inner being, our emotion, our action, our minds, our will, and we become letters of Christ to express Him. So friends, what's written in your heart today? Try to read the letter written in your heart. If you read the message, I am not enough. I'm not good enough for everyone in your heart. Please know you're not alone. Sometimes a sense of inadequacy might motivate us to grow and seek excellence in what we do and who we are and what kind of person we are becoming. However, if this is a constant sense of how you feel about yourself, this means that it has become a lens to see yourself. You're seeing things in your life through this lens that shows you you are not enough. From a narrative perspective, it means that it has become your dominant story to interpret your life, your work, your character, your value, your relationship with yourself and others. What happens as a result is that it makes you feel defeated all the time and makes you pursue more and do more at the expense of your own well-being. The question is, are you truly are you truly willing to lay down your baggage and surrender it to the Lord? Through Christ, we learn what it means to break from, break free from all that binds us and weighs us down. It all begins with surrender. If you cling to it tightly, nothing changes. However, when you surrender it to Christ, He gives you the power, the strength, the wisdom, the courage to unpack what's inside. Unpacking your baggage puts you in perspective, enabling you to understand why you cling to it despite the pain and distress, why you carry the baggage the way you do, and what prevents you from letting go. Remember last Sunday we explored what's inside of our financial baggage what weighs us down most, raising from heavy, bulky uh, stuff in our financial life to toilet, toiletry bags or to um, undergarments to uh, the dirty socks and underwear, you know, all from a financial lens. Unpacking our baggage offers insight and hindsight into our baggage. Of course, getting to know what's behind, what's inside of the baggage doesn't always lead us to change. Once we unpack the baggage, we should discern what to do with it. You know, we should discern what to do with it and what God calls us to do with it. We should decide whether we will 
allow the weight of our baggage to continue impacting our lives negatively. Going back to the baggage we are exploring today, the baggage of a sense of insecurity or or, uh, inadequacy. We may discover what's inside as we unpack it. And in this process, some of us might need help and guidance from, you know, the mental health professionals, especially if, if you feel the baggage is too old, too heavy to handle by yourself. The, re- the response, I'm not enough for everyone, suggests a deep-seated feeling of inadequacy. A fear of falling short in meeting the expectations of others, including God. Now, I don't fully understand where you're coming from when some of you share this baggage. I'm not enough for everyone in your survey. But it can be indicative of several types of emotional baggage. And I want to invite you to discern what's inside of your baggage. You take a like, personal inventory of what's inside of your baggage, like we did last week. Uh, it could be a comparison, as I shared in the beginning of my sermon. You know, where we can constantly measure ourselves against others, we often come up short. You know, we, we feel like we don't measure up. The comparison mindset can distort our perception of our own worth and abilities and leading to the feelings of inadequacy. What's inside of your baggage might be perfectionism as well. You know, striving for perfection or holding ourselves in possibly high standards can be exhausting, not just mentally, but spiritually. The belief that we must be flawless to be accepted or loved can create a sense of never being enough in the eyes of others. It perpetuates a feeling of inadequacy and self-doubt. Remember in Matthew, Jesus teaches his disciples, be perfect as your Father is perfect doesn't mean you become a perfectionist. We have to read the passage in the context of the whole passage. Before these words of Jesus, what Jesus tells us is, love your neighbor. So he talks about being perfect in the context of loving others, including the enemy. So that's Sometimes we uh, misunderstand that it was the call for perfectionism, which is not. Maybe what's inside of your baggage could be insecurity. The doubts about yourself, your abilities, your worth can stand from a lack of confidence. And, and this insecurity may drive us to seek validation from others, constantly looking for approval to feel worthy or adequate. And that leads us to another uh, uh, tendency, the people-pleasing. You know, feeling like we're not enough for everyone often leads to a tendency to uh, uh, please others, prioritize the needs and expectations of others over our own well-being. This can result in, you know, overextending ourselves, neglecting our personal boundaries, and feeling burdened by the pressure to constantly please others. Lastly, that can also lead to the, has to do with a fear of rejection. You know, the fear of being rejected or uh, or abandoned if our efforts or contributions fall short can be paralyzing. This fear may prevent us from uh, asserting ourselves or taking risks as we worry about not measuring up to the standards of others around us. Friends, whatever the the case, whatever uh, is inside of your baggage, I invite you to discern according to the words of God and decide whether you want to live a life that breaks from this baggage or let it continue to weigh you down along the journey. I know it may be hard to get rid of this completely, especially the sense of adequacy has been part of yourself for years. But remember, you were not born with it. It is something that entered your life at some point in your life. 
And you can ask God to empower you to live in ways in which it has less influence on you. It's possible when you truly know who you are before God. It's possible when you truly know who you are before God and who's inside of you. What determines the true value of a container is what's inside. If it includes honey, it becomes a uh, honey jar. It includes trash, it becomes a trash can. As we hear from uh, uh, Jessica's wonderful uh, uh, children's sermon, it's a great illustration that shows us the truth. In his book, Here and Now, Henry Nowen points out that the question that guides our action is who we are. You know, people answer this question in three ways. We are what we do. We are what others say about us. And we are what we have. Those three that uh, helps us find the answer to the question who we are. In other words, we are our success, popularity, power, and wealth. The problem is that these are the external factors we have only have limited control over. So when we take them as the basis of who we are, the foundation of our identity, we are what the world makes us. What Jesus taught in the gospel repeatedly is that an identity based on material success, popularity, power is false identity. They're like a smoke that disappears quickly with the dews on the leaves. The key is not outside, the, the key is inside. As Paul uh, reminds us in 2 Corinthians, we have a treasure in our jars of clay to show us that all surpassing power comes from God, not from us. And that treasure is Jesus Christ within us, friends. So even if we are surrounded and battered by troubles, as Paul says, we are not demoralized. Even if we are not sure what to do, we know that God knows what to do. Even if we've been spiritually terrorized, God hasn't left our side. Even if we are, we've been thrown down, we have been broken. Friends, what sustains your self-esteem, self-value, self-worth when you are hard-pressed on every side in your life? Without understanding who we are in our relationship with Christ, it is so easy to fall upon what the world tell us about who we are. That we are here in our world by accident, by chance. However, our faith in God tells us that we are not here by chance. We're God's handiwork. We are a jar of clay within which, within which Christ resides through the presence and the power of the Holy Spirit. We are a letter from Christ, not written, on ink, not written with ink, but the Spirit of the living God. So today, friends, what message does your letter communicate to yourself and others around you? For us as Christians, each day, each moment is an opportunity to grow into the fullness of Christ and thus become the true self known by Christ. Each day, each moment is an opportunity to claim our true identity as the children of love. Each day, each moment is an opportunity to say yes to God's abundant grace. As Paul says, God is more than ready to overwhelm you with every form of grace so that you will have more than enough of everything. Every moment in every way, He will make you overflow with abundance in every good thing you do. Amen? Amen.